What's going on, Doombots? Tony Scangili here with another team review, this time the Sinister 6, or Sinister 5 right now. Well, maybe we'll get Doc Ock soon. Either way, this is the team we're going to talk about, and as you may know by now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about them on three different axes. The first is going to be availability, how easy they are to farm, and kind of where you may intend on start working on them. The second is going to be usability, where they uh, show their value, what they're good at, what you may not want to use them for. And a third, of course, will be breakpoints or return on investment, how high you should get them as a team uh, in order to accomplish whatever task you're looking to accomplish. So without going too much into the explanation, I do want to say in the previous video about, I did about the Defenders, someone made a comment saying, hey, it would be helpful if you mentioned any Tier 4. So going forward, I will mention any Tier 4s that the team uh, is required to have or any individual character is required to have in order to make them the best version of themselves as well as any investments that I would kind of hold back on uh, unless you're looking to do a very specific task like be a U7 node or bring them into Dark Dimension, that kind of thing, which not necessarily possible with this team, but in the future they might be. So keep that in mind as we go into just a little fight and we talk about their availability. The Sinister Six is one of the more available teams in the game. All of the characters are farmable, and they're farmable at a relatively early pace. You can start working on them as a team and unlocking them as early as level 45 or 50, depending on how far you've progressed in the campaigns. Three of the characters are available in stores. Rhino is in the Blitz store, Vulture is in the Arena store, and Mysterio is in the Raid store. Not one of the easiest stores an early game player to access because the raid credits are a little bit scarce but they're in raid orbs so you might be able to accidentally unlock mysterio when you can start making the direct purchases though it becomes relatively easy to unlock and work on him shocker and green goblin on the other hand they are node farm shocker relatively early in the game green goblin a little bit later but ultimately by the time you're level 60 you should have access to all of these characters no matter what making them a pretty good secondary team to work on in addition, they are a little bit of a two-turn combo team. They don't really have much sustain. They're not particularly necessary for anything, but they do have a little bit of value. And as soon as we go into a conversation at the end of this about usability, you'll find out more. Editing magic. The Sinister Six is one of the most versatile teams for progressing as a player. They are fundamentally really good at defeating the defenders. Overall, they have a really interesting kit that gives them bonuses against city hero characters, including characters like Spider-Man, Symbiote Spider-Man, and that. But they really can beat up on the defenders relatively easily in the early game. That kind of breaks out eventually when Punisher and Iron Fist start doing extra damage, but they do have a lot of uses there. That said, because you can't farm them as early as the Defenders, I wouldn't count on them as the counter team to the Defenders if you're trying to play a counter meta version of the game. They are also not only necessary, but available to unlock two separate legendary characters if you don't already know. The Sinister Six team themselves are required to unlock Invisible Woman, and any Spider-Verse character, including but not limited to the Sinister Six, are required to unlock Shuri. So this one team at five star will guarantee you two legendary characters. As of right now in the time of this video, there are also multiple different raids that require either Spider-Verse or Sinister Six characters like to complete. Uh, both I believe the Beta and the Gamma raid at this time have that requirement that might change. But as of right now, they do have tags that make them relevant. The one thing they are missing as a team is a healer. This is a, as I said earlier, a two-turn combo team where by the second turn uh, or the second action they've all taken, they've all done all of the damage they can do. Hopefully you've killed most of the characters you need to kill and you're only picking off the rest. Now, there's not much else uh, as far as usability. That said... Thinking of a couple of things, like I had mentioned earlier, they can beat up the defenders or 
a Spider-Verse team, so if you're using them on War, they are a very good team on offense to counter specifically City Hero characters or low investment characters. They are one of the best teams at punching down in the game. So the stronger your Sinister Six team is, the more likely they are to be able to beat up on a weaker non-meta team that may be put together. Uh, even a very strong Sinister Six team can probably do away with the average Ultron team as I've done before with a very, very lucky Shocker ult. But you can't really control uh, what you're going to be facing up against war. So it's important to know that they can do certain things in war with very minimal investment, but they are really good on defense. And one of the reasons they're really good on defense is yes, you can, they can be beaten by a handful of teams, but they can't be underestimated. If that makes sense. If you try to get Q and use leftover characters, they start without needing to be boosted. They start with two uh, stacks of deflect. So you don't have to spend boosts to keep them competitive. And if a player underestimates them, or if you underestimate them, you may be on the wrong side of a Rhino ultimate, which will accidentally kill two of your characters. And all of a sudden, you lost a fight that you kind of underestimated. So they're not completely indestructible team, but they do require more of a response than just leftover characters or like the hand minions, uh, especially with their built-in deflect. They're a pretty good team on both sides of the war, and any investment you put on them is going to come down to what you're seeing and what you need to counter. And now that we've kind of gone over their usability, let's talk about breakpoints and what that means for them. Now, the Sinister Six team at five star probably doesn't have to be much higher than about 75 to 80k in general overall as a team in order to unlock both Shuri and Scientist Supreme. They don't need much. Remember, you don't have to three star the event because you only have to do it once. And usually the five star unlock fights give you enough extra characters in order to kind of help you a little bit along the way. So if you're looking to use them as a team in order to unlock legendaries, you don't have to put too much investment in them overall. If you're looking to kind of take them a little bit further and use them as a counter team to the defenders on war or to really take out a node, that's where it's going to come in handy to have a little bit more investment in them. For my money, I found that about 200k is maybe a little bit more of an investment than I'd need for them to do simple tasks like completing a raid node in, in a Greek raid or beating up a defender's team of around 200 or 300k power. Uh, they can do it usually relatively easily. It's a little bit of a, of a skill check fight, but once you paint it by numbers, you can probably get away with a blinding punisher on turn one instead of using the AoE heal block from Mysterio and working on from there. They don't need much overall. So if you like the Sinister Six team, it's one of those teams like every other where the more you put into them, the better they'll be, but you don't really need that much investment in them. And nothing really clarifies that more than the fact that none of them really need tier fours, unless you're looking for a very specific counter. Uh, if you think that you're Sinister Six team might need to be specifically used to beat up Ultrons in war, or if you're under the impression that you're going to really have to hold defense down in a very important war room, then you might want to put some tier fours, but overall, just kind of looking through my characters, I have used them relatively successful, and you can see they're about 200k, without a single tier four in them. Uh, if I were to put tier fours in them, the things that come to mind off the top are Shocker's ultimate, even though it doesn't look like much, the more damage he does and an extra attack, because it's piercing and it goes through armor and it's pure damage or true damage, it does hit a lot. It also hits summon minions very, very well, and it's kind of an AoE. So this is one of the tier fours I might invest in. Looking into some of the passives, you'll see that a little bit extra damage per city hero or total, that could help, right? These are beneficial. 
a little bit extra health per character, this is great. It'll make him more survivable if you want to use him on defense. Uh, a little bit more damage is kind of all his kit gives him. Green Goblin just gains a little bit more max health. You know, none of these abilities complete the character's kits. You know, and you can even see I have tier 9. I didn't need much investment in these guys in order to get good value out of them. I personally use them on war defense. And do they get many defense wins? No, but they do tend to take a team that in a punch down. And for my money, that's pretty much worth it. If you're using a Sinister 6 team on defense and someone has to use a Supernatural or a Fantastic Four against them, well... That's a pretty good fight in your hands. Uh, like, that counts as a win. You took a really good team. So they do require a response. But as far as investment goes, you'll see even some of the characters I did invest a lot in, I didn't really bring them up. They have individual kits that make them good. Just a couple little notes. Uh, Rhino can be added to any team on war defense that you would think someone would use Magneto to defeat in order to prevent him from pulling them all together because Rhino's super secret ability on Rhino Hide is when he's blinded, clear one negative effect on self and each ally. doesn't matter if they're Sinister Six. So he's kind of his own little counter to Magneto. You don't really see many Brotherhood teams on defense in war, you know, but if you do, you can use the Sinister Six to kind of get around some of what they're trying to do, hopefully. Uh, another kind of interesting note comes with the character of Green Goblin, and we'll get into this more in the Spider-Verse team, because even though Green Goblin is a Sinister Six character, he actually works a little bit better with the Symbiote Spider-Verse team. Uh, the quarter eyes ability to just start ripping uh, positive effects off of opponents, huge. Amazing. And on the Symbiote Spider-Verse team, since... They're all about debuffs and making sure that they can stick and progress and do extra damage. Taking off extra buffs, always a positive feature. So Green Goblin is one of those characters that as long as he's around Spider-Verse people, he'll be okay. The other characters, a oh, little bit lackluster. Mysterio obviously is in need a little bit of a help. He doesn't quite do much for the team. Pretty much all he does for the team is located right here in the focus because the Sinister Six does have dispels, have debuffs, has a bunch of stuff that they want to make sure land, but his summons aren't that impressive. He he doesn't do much damage. He's another AoE heal block on turn one like Mordo for not great damage. Master of Illusion is a very useful ability, especially when you're calling assists, and especially if your Sinister Six team is pretty strong. Uh, but... You know, situationally against City Heroes, great. Outside of that, mm, not so great. So he's a character that needs a little bit of a boost. And Vulture, even though a very quick character with a lot of turn meter manipulation and debuffing, he doesn't actually do the damage to make up for the fact that uh, he's taking extra turns or to justify it. Even Liftoff, an ability that's supposed to do extra damage per negative effect, just doesn't feel like it hurts that much. And this is a 50k Vulture that's still only putting up about 10,000 damage base. So he's missing quite a bit from a kit where comparatively Green Goblin just does more damage. Even though his numbers, his base numbers lower, his multipliers actually matter and they mean something. So Vulture and Mysterio, good kit characters. Green Goblin, Rhino, and Shocker, truly the powerhouses of the team and kind of what enables them. The stronger your Rhino and Shocker are, the more overall damage you're going to be doing. Vulture, Green Goblin, and Mysterio are more or less just there to either back clean up or help the other team do what they need to do. Outside of that, I think we're pretty much done. Obviously, we'll do a redux on this when the sixth Sinister Six member comes in who I assume is going to be Dr. Octopus, and I assume is going to actually replace Green Goblin on the team, not Mysterio, because focus, but we'll see as time goes on. Anyway, comment below. Let me know what you use the Sinister Six for, if you can remember how early you access them, or if you're working on them now because you're trying to unlock a character. Just let me know what you think about the Sinister Six. I think they're a very fun team, and that's something that I do love the most about games. Not when every team is exactly perfect at everything, but when they all have their own little niches and you can enjoy them at your own leisure. So 
In the meantime, before the next video, I want you guys to have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.